Safe to say, not great. Oh my god, this is so nerve wracking. Yo! Uh, it's just giving me goosebumps. Don't come down. Oh, oh that side. Uh, no, he's sunk it. I messed this one up pretty badly. Let's go back to the start. It's early 2021 and I'm in Sri Lanka on a tuk-tuk rally in aid of Cool Earth. Problem was we had failed miserably to raise the money required by our organizers and we're now as a consequence indebted to them. So we started talking about how we could raise the money once we got back and I remembered a conversation I'd had with my friend Muzz where he said, Oh blimey, my dad crossed the chat on a bathtub. Brilliant, let's do that. Problem is, the French authorities have tightened up a bit since the 1980s when Billy Neal made his grand crossing. After a month or so of trying to make it happen, they told me pretty definitely. No. Okay, next best thing, let's do the tent. From its source in Gloucestershire all the way to where I was living at the time in Greenwich. After a lot of planning, risk assessing, route layouting, and this and that. But it finally looked like it was going to happen. And then... Okay. All right. Well, um... Okay, so... It seemed slightly inappropriate for us to take our badly converted bathroom appliances through a city in mourning. So, plan C, we defer the launch two weeks and move to the Tamar. A 100 kilometer river in the southwest of England coming out in Plymouth, the city that launched the Mayflower to America. It would be perfect. This is the night before. Yeah. He's nervous. Mm -hmm. ah. oh. We're in West Cornwall, stood by a beach, having a pint, which did a brief. We leave tomorrow at 5 o'clock in the morning to drive to the launch point. We launch at 7.30. Very cold and water will be much, much colder. colder. <laughs> So, launch day, very exciting. Didn't take very long for the first problem to emerge. We got our three tubs. Give you a little, little house tour here. Ballast at the front, ballast at the back. Lots of trapped air and little capsules in the back, so it's neutrally buoyant in case it tips over. A nice seat, a nick from an old chair by a skip. Then we've got this handy little thing here at the front in case I want to pull it or throw it. My dry bag full of baked beans and, and tins and stuff. All ballast evenly spread along the bottom and ply fitted on top. And he's got his bag, also with baked beans. Oh, oh. <laughs> Take me back, Len. Oh my God. So, Sean went for a cast iron tub, and then the late stages of testing found that cast iron was too heavy to work. All the weight was at the top where the lip went around the tub. So, that one went out the window, and then with about a week to go, Sean found a new tub and did all the work. But because of that, it was untested until now. Where's your tub, Edge? Hey, over there next to yours. Mine's really comfortable. Uh, it fits really nicely. <laughs> does yours work really well, mate? Oh, it does work really well. Does yours work? Mine well? works really well. How's yours, Sean? Well, oh, not good. To get a grasp of where we slipped up here, we need to talk a little about how these bathtubs are able to float in the first place in respect to Archimedes' principle. It states, the upward buoyant force that is exerted on a body immersed in fluid is equal to the weight of the fluid that the body displaces, represented like this. So, if buoyant force is greater than the object's weight, the object will rise to the surface and float, whereas, if the buoyant force is less than the object's weight, the object will sink. Let's take tub 1. It displaces around 140 kilos of water, so I'm about 80 kilos, and then I need 50 kilos of ballast at the bottom of the tub to lower its center of gravity. Without this, the tub would be wildly unstable and would capsize almost immediately. That gives me 10 kilos for cans of baked beans, and I'm within the bathtub's working limit. As for Sean and tub 3, it was only about 70% the size of tub 1, meaning it only displaced sufficient water to generate a buoyant force able to support around 90 kilos. Sean's roughly 80 kilos, more including his 15 coats, meaning there's only around 10 kilos left to play with to stabilize the tub, not nearly enough. In short, Sean's smaller tub does not displace enough water to support him and the ballast he would need to be workably stable. How are we feeling? Not great. <laughs> She's back in the van. The tub's a failure. Can help the boys at least. Bit frustrating. It's still gonna be a good trip. I'm gonna get to say hello to so many animals. <laughs> All right, the boys are officially off. One tub down, but 
Having gained a surprisingly burly cheerleader, we pushed on. When what would be the most substantial hurdle we would encounter became apparent. Muller drought has been declared in many parts of the England of in the last few hours, following the driest July in the country the since 1935. It means that water companies can... Yeah, well, I'm trying to enjoy the hottest day in England. It's 40 degrees. Just coming out of one of the driest summers in British history meant the river levels were extraordinarily low. This meant a day where we would be dragging and portaging our tubs a good chunk anyway. It became a day where we were leading, dragging and portaging our tubs essentially the entire day. Oh my god, don't come down. There are balls and this is all pool. There we go. Let him do this. Woo! And you're right. Yeah, it's a bit deep. <laughs> Woo -hoo. Look at him go. All right. Whoa. What are you staring at? You haven't seen a man position his bathtub for boarding before? Go on board there, I'll push you over. Push you ready? Oh my god, oh that side. I just got chased by a big herd of cows. That was very scary. How are you feeling, AJ? Good workout today, for sure. Probably about one kilometer away from our final destination for today. Not even close. The boys have done a lot of dragging. Yeah, it's been tough to a lot of weight in those tubs to make them work in the water and they have to drag them over the, the rocks. It's really difficult. Whirly was right, it had been tough. And after 11 hours, most of which looked just like this, we tied the tubs to some trees, scrambled up the bank, made a beeline through a field back to the van, and put our heads down for the night. Starting day two. I'm about to have some beans. We're gonna pick up the tubs and then head off to a point just a little bit further down. It's gonna be a whole new world. A big river. It's running faster. That's the other challenge. <laughs> we'll have more depth, which means we should actually be able to get in the water, but if we do encounter any obstacles, it's going to be significantly harder to get around them. All right, mission bathtub recovery. So we're going to try and empty them out as much as we can, drag them up the side of the bank, and we're going to do a 80 yard dash. They're so curious. We've got one tub out. It's up there with Whirly. Another down here, Edge is untangling his rope so we can drag it up that bank. So having a peek at the bottom of the tub, pretty beat up. Pretty bad, just a few scratches. And like the thread's gone on this side. But I think it's the water tight, it's holding up. Then the other side, <laughs> absolutely demolished. Bro, that's massive. This end here, you can see where that, was, that came up. Yeah, I think the whole bottom used to have more of an even shape. And this section's been like punched. You can't do another day like that, that's for sure. Sean, how are you feeling? Oh, AJ, how are you feeling? I wish I didn't have a bathtub. <laughs> Dan, how are you feeling? Feeling great. Not for long though. We head downstream to a different part of the river I thought would be more workable. Much bigger part of the river. A couple of rapids up ahead. I played it's a smoother day today. AJ's giving me some kayaking tips. I've never even been in a kayak before, so this is all completely new to me. AJ, though, on the other hand, Hello, people. he is a licensed kayak instructor, is that right? Not licensed anymore. Ran out. <laughs> Not I've killed anyone yet. So tell me some more kayak tips. There's three things that you just want to keep in mind. Lays, body, balance. Here's a question for you, AJ. Do you think I am the first person in the world to learn how to kayak this way? Could be. I've never uh, kayaked in bathtub either. Oh, whoa! There's a rock. <laughs> Woo! They have been paddling a lot this time, which is so much better. They go on much quicker than yesterday. Just these little rapids, they kind of have to get out and walk it. Challenge like 600 of today. I don't know if they'll just walk through here or if they're gonna try and paddle. Ah, they're going for the walk approach. Oh, AJ's gone. Oh, AJ's laying down. Oh. The problem is we were right on the border for when the very low river levels of the summer give way to the substantially higher ones of the autumn and winter. And thanks to that drought from earlier, we fell on the wrong side. Which meant the river was averaging just 0.3 meters in depth, about a fifth of what would be typical for this time of year. This meant day two, although populated by some good paddling stints, was still primarily 
a drag fest. The difference here was instead of dragging incredibly stubborn 80 kilo tubs along ground where they didn't want to budge, we were now holding them back in fast moving water that desperately wanted to whisk them away. The water was deep enough to support the tubs and allow them to pull at us, but shallow enough were we to sit in the tubs, the addition of our weight would bottom them out. Then it started getting dark, but we were close, like really close. So we started to rush. And then... Spanner sank. Luckily the water was no more than knee high, so although the tub filled all the way up and did technically sink, it had only sank by a few inches. Recovery was easy. We pulled it out, tied it to a tree to return the next morning. Day three kicks off, a win. We rattled back down to the tubs, jumped in them, shot down the river, yanked them out, and made a new plan. We would head downstream again to where the river was navigable to boats, so there's no chance of bottoming out. Then have a clear run to where we'd finish for the night in Salt Ash, ready to shoot off to Plymouth Harbour the following morning. Get you back, yeah. And these are all kind of a bit choppy. You're gonna think. I think you'll be okay. I think you'll be fine. We've got this, mate. Now in deep water, we were off like shots. Or at least Spanner was. Partially because I was a much less experienced paddler, but also because I was folded like a bad poker player eating a cheese omelette. My pace was a hard fought, but still admirable, crawl. Yeah, How you feeling, AJ? Pretty confident. Regardless of this, we were finally making a pace that was better than we'd planned. Covering around two and a half kilometers in just 30 minutes, things were looking great. And then... Spanner sank. We are down to one tub. One tub is literally more the other is not. The one that is not is now tomorrow's mission for recovery, so... Essentially, tub one had a sealed compartment in the back, so that if it filled with water, sufficient air was trapped to keep us on the right side of that equation from earlier, and as a consequence, afloat. Tub two, on the other hand, lacked this sealed compartment, which gave Spanner the space to sit comfortably and whiz around at high speed, but also meant that when it got choppy and he took on a little too much water, the Tamar's fish suddenly had exciting new means to explore personal hygiene. Dang. In a little inlet on the side, sort of hazard to anyone. Hey folks, hope you enjoyed. From this point onwards, it's just going to be a video of us dragging a muddy tub out of a muddy lake. So best use of this time, head over to justgiving.com forward slash tub in Tamar. Give a little if you have it. If you're an inquisitive type and you want to know more about the cause that we were raising money for today, then you can head over to coolearth.org and they've got a lot of fantastic resources about the uh, conservation work that they're doing right now to help save the planet that you and I are both living on.